the year 2023, Dak is unquestionably one of the best quarterbacks we've got in the NFL today. He put it on some defenses this year, and I think a big, big part of that was the fact that C.D. Lamb is so versatile. Is there anything more automatic than C.D. Lamb to Dak Prescott on a slant route right now? Look at the release. There's your separation. Great route. Stutter and go. Gets by clean. That is unbelievable. May be the greatest catch I've ever seen. So in, the, in Dallas, C.D. Lamb, I would argue, Matt, is just as valuable to this team as Dak Prescott. Now, obviously, the monies aren't going to line up, and people will say, well, if you took Dak off this, you know, uh, where does this offense go? Again, I just I argue that C.D. Lamb is just as valuable to this offense as Dak Prescott is. Prescott, by the way, um, maybe not low key, but I think unexpectedly, again, having one of his best seasons of his career and and truly in the year 2023, Dak is unquestionably one of the best quarterbacks we've got in the NFL today. Now, you could say, oh, injuries or whatever, but man, he put it on some defenses this year, and I think a big, big part of that was the fact that C.D. Lamb is so versatile. Yeah, you know, I've always loved C.D. Lamb for that versatility. You know, I've even had conversations with C.D. Lamb about this. Like, it's so difficult to be not just good at all three receiver positions, but to truly, I think, have – like a master's level understanding of how to win at all three receiver positions. That's just, it's, there's just not a lot of guys doing that. I think this year they have um, been more intentional, the Dallas Cowboys, about how can we find ways to isolate CeeDee Lamb as that outside receiver, the number one, whatever. But uh, in previous years, he's primarily just been a slot guy. I would argue that there's not been something this year that like, oh, it really clicked for CD Lamb and he 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 took his game to another level. I honestly just think the Cowboys were smarter about his usage this year mm. because there's not been anything throughout the course of his career. And even sometimes, James, we have we have definitely gotten on the Cowboys about like, yo, you can use this guy outside. You can ha make him yep. you can have him run vertical routes. You can have him do this stuff. That stuff has always been present within his game. I think the Cowboys coaching staff has just been a little bit sharper this year about how they've used him. That being said, like when you take a player that can do that stuff as an outside receiver and you put him on the inside and you make him a slot, then he just becomes an absolute matchup nightmare. And you saw it like, is there anything more automatic than CD Lamb to Dak Prescott on a slant route right now? <laughs> it just felt like every time CD Lamb is running a slant route, Dak Prescott is going to, especially now with the timing of this offense. And that's what really I think has vaulted him in terms of the most valuable receivers, having a guy like that, that in the West coast offense, where it's all about rhythm and timing. And Dak has talked about that this year. It's yeah. all about rhythm and timing. Like I hit the top of my drop, my foot's there. And like those routes need to be synced up with the quarterback's footwork, especially on those slants like that. These two guys are just in such a, I wouldn't even call it like a mind meld. I'd call it like a, like a physical <laughs> meld, the timing of, of, yeah, of yeah. his routes and his drops just combine it all together. It's what I think has made this such a special season for CD lamb. All right. So let me throw this out there for CD lamb too, by the way. Okay. So he leads the NFL in total receptions with 122. Um, and it's funny. I think we just got so um, used to saying Tyreek is the best guy at this position in the NFL currently, but you know, actually to be honest with you, CD lamb has again, 10 more receptions than Tyreek Hill. And he's got more yards too. 1757 total for CD lamb versus 1732 for Tyreek. And I get it. Tyreek missed a game, uh, but he's, uh, but the point that I'm making is that he's right there with them going stride for stride. They yeah. both have 12 total touchdowns this year. From a fantasy perspective, CD lamb, I would argue was more valuable than Tyreek Hill, especially late in the season, which is when it matters the most. Right? So again, I, and, and I think when people hear these like counting stats and hear us talking about CD Lamb, I think they might be a little bit surprised that it's not Tyreek Hill is like the runaway. You know what I'm saying? CD Lamb did his thing this year, man. Um, and it was at times it was a little bit of a slow burn, but man, there were some serious pop games out there where you're like, yo, 
This guy is putting in the work right now. Um, by the way, before I move on, let me let me just kind of sort of break down CD Lamb's uh, alignment because it is truly pretty rare. Okay, so fifty five percent of his snaps uh, this year came while lined up inside, and forty five percent lined up outside. Right, so again, pretty close to fifty fifty, but still a little bit shading mo a little bit more towards the inside. Right, sixty percent of his um, you know recept or sixty percent of his um, targets came while he was lined up inside. About 55% of his receptions and a, a, a shade under 55% of his yards came while lined up inside. But again, we're talking about a guy that even though he lines up inside and outside, he gets it done both inside, both outside, scoring out there, scoring inside. He just gets it done everywhere. Um, and C.D. Lamb, I think, has, has really, Matt, put together a, a remarkable season in terms of versatility. 100%. And again, it, it took, you're right, it took a little bit. You like, if you just go back to CD Lamb, like the first five weeks of the season, it's four targets, four catches, 77 yards in the opener against the Giants. He did have the 11 catch, 143 yard, 13 target explosion. But then it's like seven targets, four for 53, and a loss to Arizona. Remember when they right. lost to the Arizona Cardinals? Crazy. The Patriots, he has four <laughs> catches for 36 yards and a touchdown. And then it really all kind of came together when he has yep. five targets in, in that blowout loss to the San Francisco 49ers. And to C.D. Lamb's credit, he didn't, you know – go on social media and like some <laughs> cryptic tweets, right, but he right. did make it pretty clear to the coaching staff and publicly. I need to get the ball more. Like I need, yeah. not only do I need to get the ball more, but I need to be put in positions to get the ball more. And Mike McCarthy and these guys put their heads together and they said, are and I, like, I could have told you to do this like a year ago, bro, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but they got, but they got to it. Okay. We should have got to it at least week one, but like, I could have told you to do this right. a year ago. Like yeah, 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 the yeah, way to right. get CD lamb, the ball more in, and again, this very specific West coast offense is you put him on the outside. You put him as the X receiver because that X receiver, when you're going to have that guy run in breaking routes, he's going to be the number one read naturally. Yeah. That's where the, because that's where the play is designed. That's the way the play is structured. So he, so Dak much Prescott's, space out there too. So much space. Dak Prescott's eyes are going to go to that player first and foremost. So right there, you see like the, the target distribution between the inside and the outside. Obviously, again, you want to match up on the inside because you, it's a matchup nightmare. It's just un, in like an uncoverable situation when it's right. CD lamb versus like, God forbid a linebacker safety, but even like a nickel corner, right? It's, it is <laughs> yeah, a total yeah, yeah, yeah. mismatch and you, totally. you're going to be, you're going to be, you, you can't, this is what we always talk about. Like, oh, okay, this guy's gonna be double covered, whatever. You can't break your defense's rules that badly to like, now we have two guys on the slot receiver on every snap. You just, it, it's, you can't do it. You want those plays, but you also want the plays where he's outside and Dak's eyes are going to go to him first. And he's going to, like I said, get the ball out to him when he hits the top of the drop. So let that be a lesson to all of you out there. Like sometimes when receivers complain, I know the first thing is like, oh, diva, you know, diva. he just cares about his stats, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes they got a point. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes they so, sometimes they've got a point and like there's a right way to go about it. There's a wrong way to go about it. We've talked plenty about the wrong ways to go about it, whether it's, uh, you know, the Elijah Moore thing. Like you go on Twitter when your team's w w winning. Don't do that. You know, there's the George Pickens, like the the um, quiet quitting protest on the field. <laughs> you, you, that's not the right way to go about it. Right. Even if the results end up being good, that's not right. the right way to go about it. But like C Lamb, right. right way to go about it. And the results, again, I think speak for themselves in this particular instance.